a little while ago, I ended up making a video comparing the latest ARM64 based processors to the traditional x86 based processors that have been around for decades. Now, the comments from those videos made it clear that I didn't really do a great job explaining the subtleties between them in a very effective manner. And also, I may have edited the video a bit too much with lots of video effects. I also didn't address what processor would be best for you. So in this video, we're gonna right all those wrongs and discuss just that. So let's get going. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Rafi, and if you're new here, I am a medical doctor who makes content about tech, travel, tips and tricks. So if you want to lead your best nerd life, this is probably the channel for you. Now, having made an entire video about this entire topic before, I thought what we would focus on this time is explanation via analogies. But before we begin, just a little disclaimer. I'm a medical doctor, not a computer scientist. I am a tech enthusiast, so this is my simple explanation for a relatively complex topic. Now, the absolute basic differences between these two chipsets has to do with what sort of calculations or computation that they're most efficient for, and also what sort of computer programs they can run. The traditional x86 chips, so those are the ones from Intel or AMD, are known as complex instruction set chips, or CISC. And like the name suggests, they can handle a wide range of computational tasks, so they're much more flexible. In contrast, the ARM64 chips, which are the ones that you get from Qualcomm, like the Snapdragon or the Apple M1 chips, are known as a reduced instruction set or RISC chips. As the name suggests here as well, they have less things that they can compute, but the things that they can, can compute, they can do it much more efficiently. Now, I spent hours trying to come up with adequate analogies to explain these concepts. And even using ChatGPT, I've come up with two, and I think we need both to kind of explain what the differences are. So the first analogy I'm gonna use is that of a bicycle. You know, pushing around, riding around town. So if you happen to be living in a city and riding around town, the best bike for you is probably gonna be a road bike. That is something that's super sleek with thin tires, maybe minimal gears, something light that can get you from point A to point B relatively quickly. This is the equivalent of having an ARM64 chip. For most day-to-day -day things, it's highly efficient for what it's doing. They're optimized for specific use cases, and they're very good at what they do. Now, compare that to someone who maybe doesn't live in a city, but has a variety of terrain. Maybe you're out in the countryside, or maybe you live in a mountainous or hilly region. Then you'd probably want something like a mountain bike. They have thicker tires, broader tires for more traction. You might have suspension, you might have more gears because you're going up and down, and you might have to constantly change things. Now that bike is going to be a lot more flexible. It's going to be able to handle your city terrain, but it's also going to be able to handle all things that you throw at it. And this is like your traditional x86 processor or the CISC chips. They have a lot more flexibility in how you can use them. However, just like in the bike example, they are generally heavier and more complicated and require a bit more pedal power to get going. And I hope you get the essential trade-off in this analogy. On the one hand, you have a bike that is very optimized for what it does. So it delivers on speed using very minimal energy. You don't have to pedal as hard. On the contrary, you have a mountain bike which can handle a lot more different terrain, but it might be heavier and therefore require more energy. And the second analogy. The second analogy I have is that of you trying to dig a hole in your backyard. So let's say you're gonna plant some trees. You have a shovel, and you can basically get yourself out to the backyard and get going. It's you and a shovel as the tool, and you dig your hole and you can plant a tree. Now, let's say you were excavating your backyard to, I don't know, have a new basement or have an underground garage. In this case, an earth mover of some description or heavy machinery is what you need. If you haven't guessed in this example, you and a shovel is the ARM64 version of things, and the x86 is the heavy machinery. Now, you might be thinking, isn't this very similar to the bicycle example? And the main difference here is that how many people do you know that have heavy machinery just stuck in their garage for this occasion? Most people might have a shovel, but very few actually own or operate heavy machinery. And in a way, this is where the big differences between what these two different processes offer comes into the fore. Most people aren't gonna be excavating the equivalent of their backyard very often. So most of the time, all they need is a shovel. 
But if you happen to be, say, a builder who constantly excavates sites, then maybe you're better off with the heavy machinery. The other thing to consider before I get to recommendations is that x86 processors have been the dominant form of computing for laptops and computers for the last few decades. So as a result, there's a lot more hardware, there's a lot more optimizations built in, whereas ARM64 isn't exactly new. It has been around for a while, but it's less adopted by the mainstream. It is and has been very common in mobile phones, for example, but in traditional sort of laptops or computers, it's been less prevalent. So I'll divide this into basically two questions that you need to answer. A, do you spend most of your time at a desk or at a desktop computer, aka you don't need to move things around? And two, are you a typical or an atypical user? I would call a typical computer user someone who uses mainly the brand name apps. If it's Microsoft Word or Google Docs, or most of your time on a browser window and doing things like email, even Outlook or Mail. So those are all kind of known apps. If you mentioned it to the average Joe, they would kind of know what was happening. Maybe you do some light photo editing or video editing or some casual gaming. Those I kind of categorize as the typical user. Now, I would consider the a typical user as someone who's, say, a serious gamer who plays a lot of multiplayer online games competitively. Maybe you use specialized software, be it Gigapixel by Topaz Labs or Blender, or maybe even DaVinci Resolve. These are lesser well-known, more powerful and niche software products that most people in the mainstream don't use. Or maybe you're just doing things that you know is computationally much more demanding. In this situation, I would call these people the atypical user. Now, for most people who are going to be using a desktop, I think you should stick to the x86 version of things. This will ensure that you basically are most compatible with most of the software and hardware out there. You're not going to really notice that much of a difference given the fact that you're plugged in, you're not moving, there's no battery to worry about. Of course, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, Basically, everything you can get currently is a ARM system on a chip, so you don't really have the option. Now, if you need portability and you're talking about laptops, I think the difference between a typical and an atypical user really becomes evident. If you're the typical user, an ARM64 based device might be far better for you. A ARM powered laptop will generally get you better battery life and be faster at the usual tasks. If you happen to want a portable device and are a typical user, I think that an ARM64 device is probably going to be better for you. They work relatively well in terms of doing the day-to-day -day tasks, be it email, word processing, listening to Spotify or watching YouTube, and they put far less strain on the battery because they're kind of efficientized for exactly those processes. The devices that you'll end up with will have better battery life, will generally be lighter. Now, if you happen to be someone who needs a laptop but is an atypical user, maybe you're a serious gamer, or you run a lot of rendering projects on 3D Studio Max, then you might consider an x86 chip. Whilst the battery life won't be as robust, what you will get is better software compatibility and the ability to use your GPU very effectively. Now, I'll give you my own example just to kind of show you the pros and cons. I would classify myself as someone who values portability, but is also an atypical user. I do tend to make these videos, use some more complicated programs here and there, be it the medical side of things, or just fiddling around with coding and 3D rendering. And so generally speaking, if I were to take my own advice, I would end up with an x86 processor. But instead, I've ended up with the Microsoft Surface Pro 11, which is an ARM-based chip. And that's because one of the other key things I value is battery life. The ability to, to unplug it and then for it to last a whole day is very important to me. As you might have noticed with the Apple side of things, the difference between the old laptops and the new laptops in terms of functionality isn't actually that far. And that's because as time goes on, the ARM chips are getting better at either emulation so that they can run the x86 code with no compatibility issues, or just more and more software providers are actually building native ARM64 apps to take advantage of these new processes. A couple of points here is that atypical or more unusual software than the day-to-day -day seems to lag behind a lot more. 
even simple things like QuickShare that helps transfer photos and videos from my phone to my laptop only went live a couple of months ago. So there is still these few little rough edges to sort out. The other thing is, even though these devices actually have fairly capable GPUs or graphics processing units, they don't really get utilized a lot of the times in these newer software that's running natively on ARM64. For example, the video editing software I use, Filmora, will detect but not be able to use the Adreno GPU in this device, whereas the same software running on an x86 version of things would detect the traditional GPU and actually be a little bit faster in terms of rendering. So in a way, even though you have fairly capable hardware on the ARM64 side, especially for Windows, the software might not be taking full advantage of it. Personally, if I'm having a portable device, the main thing I want out of it is the ability to disconnect and work for a long period of time from a remote environment, be it a cafe without a PowerPoint or around the hospital somewhere. So as a result, for me, being thin and light and having great battery life whilst having relatively good performance means that I have gone with an ARM64 device. Now, I hope that was a good explanation of things. Please do let me know in the comments if you have any further questions that I can address or if you think that I could have explained it better. If you'd like to see my original video on the topic, please click, click here. And if you want to see my review of the Surface Pro 11, click over here. And I'll see you in the next one.